Our next speaker is Alice. She is a data science manager at Ford, and she's going to talk about transport electrification. Alice. Thank you, Margaret. All right. I would like to start with a question. So when you think of Ford, what image comes into your mind? To help you visualize, I actually provided some pictures here. Okay. <laughs> so would you think of our F-Series, which has been the top selling trucks in more than four decades? So on the top left here is a very beautiful looking F-150s. On the bottom left is our heavy duties. Or maybe you can think of our performance vehicles. So on the top right is actually our Mustang GTs. Can I ask a question? If I ask you to identify a difference of the orange vehicle on the bottom right here, could you find it? Well, due to time, I will give you the answer. This is actually a full electric vehicle. It has a name, Mustang Mach-E. It got a name inspired by the first generation Mustang. It looked very stylish and very fun to drive. I drive one myself, really enjoyed it. And the last is, it actually generates zero emission to the environment. So that's one good model, but good product to show Ford commitment to electrification. So Ford is fully dedicated to support a more sustainable, inclusive, and equitable future for transportation. As an employee at Ford, I have the privilege to be part of this journey and also contribute to this shared goal. There are some interesting facts I want to share with you. So in 2011, Ford actually introduced the first four, this basically the four electric focus EV. In 2016, Ford actually became the signatory of the UN SDGs. In 2020, Ford launched the Mach-E that I just spent last time on in the previous slide. And in the same year, Ford set the goal to achieve um, neutral carbon, a uh, carbon neutral by the end of 2050. So as a data scientist, how can we contribute to this journey? And I can give you some examples based on my experience. I could use big data analytics to identify the on-road fuel economy as well as CO2 reduction and use that data-driven outcome to help Ford to claim compliance credits from EPA, Envir Environmental Protection Agencies. And in another case, me and my team, we work using uh, AI machine learning modelings to help our business at Ford to develop customer-driven digital products and services to the new business domain, including energy services, greater services, and public charging. So today, I would like to use one of the scenario, uh, one of the initiatives projects we have been working on and share with you our journey and also the challenges we have encountered. So I will start with pain point. We follow exactly the perfect cycle of data science life cycle. Start with the pain point. One, based on JD Power, one out of five EV charging attempts fails. And in the meantime, customer complained that when they are charging, the speed was too slow. And during the charging time, they have no place to go. Sometimes they couldn't find the, park, the charging stations. And sometimes when they go there, the charger is broken. It really makes their experience very struggling. So we sit together with our business partners and charging experts to identify the problem statement. How can we develop data-driven solutions to enhance Ford EV charging performance and improve EV customer charging experience. One of the analytical problem formulation we have come up is, can we identify or build a reliability matrix for a public charging station leveraging historical Ford customer charging experience there? So now we come with data. We lack of data. We don't have enough data. Out of 55,000 public charging stations, we could only match 50%, 60%, sometimes 70% of them. Even for those charging stations we do have data on, we only have very single digit number of visits. How can you build a machine learning model only use one or two visits, right? And there's a lot of noise in the data, 
And some data are not initially designed for the analysis. So we have to find you know, the right engineers to help us give us the logic so we can decode, transform, and build algorithms to clean the data. In some other cases, we even have to join force with engineers to design new data collection. Data scientists have even set up the data schema and say, hey, this is the future data I want to see in, in the vehicle. The last but not least, even after we find the data, we identify the pattern, we don't have ground truth. How could you know the pattern you're looking at the data is actually happening in real life? You know how we do? We go to charge ourselves. Yes. So now we encounter a lot of challenges from data. Next question is, what can we do from model? We also encounter lots of challenges. I want to list two examples here. We identify the DB scan is a great method to cluster geolocations when we try to find the pattern of customer. But now it comes to the question, how do we set up the parameter? How, how much longer distance you want to set so that the two points in the map should be grouped together? What if you have parking spot in the front of building and on the back of building? So the distance you pick as the parameter will significantly impact. You may end up with two clusters or one clusters. Even after you finish clustering the, uh, all the locations, how frequent should you update this analysis? Some people change patterns. They move to a different city, right? They buy a new house. And only another example is we talk about reliability score. And due to the lack of data, we cannot use the traditional mathematical modeling to, to define reliability. We have to leverage rule-based. Then what kind of rule should we set? What kind of base score should we assign to a customer who succeeded in the first try? Or for another customer who failed like three times, very struggle, and finally in the fourth time they succeed? How much penalty you want to add to that? And after we give a score for every single visit, we have to aggregate those scores into one score for that charging station. Then should you consider temporal effect, right? If you fail today, will that be more important than you know, two weeks earlier, people succeeding charging there? Do you want to tell the customer, hey, maybe this station have some issues. We should talk to the provider to fix it. So we have to encounter all these challenges and try to adjust accordingly. And the last one is, even after you get a score of those charging stations, how confident you are? What if you get a score from only one vehicle? And compare, you may be less confident compared to the cases you get the result from many vehicles charged for a long time in that station. All right, so we identify the data, we collect the data, and we build models out of it. We end up having a reliability score for every charging station. So we find out what had happened. We know how painful the customer are. Can we start to investigate the why? Can we help engineers to understand the root cause, what has really happened in the charging station so that they can fix it in the quickest way? So the three pictures is actually, I took it myself. In some cases, the car reader didn't even work. In another case, the payment was denied. I'm pretty sure I have very high credit, in, you know, credit limit. <laughs> and then in another case, in the middle of the night, look at how dark it is. I went to a charging station. All the chargers are unavailable. I cannot make it to home, right? So we have been working closely with engineers to identify all those cases and classify them into different clusters so that they can have a more you know, helpful tool to immediately address those issues together with the network providers. And we also have two active working strings. One is leveraging AI machine learning models to find the failure patterns. Can we identify it anomaly ahead of time instead of wait until it happened? And last but not least, it's getting very popular with general AI and large language modelings. We want to leverage that to understand customer pain points. What exactly make them struggle in those charging stations? So to conclude, we have a long journey to go, but we are excited that we can leverage data science effort to help build a green sustainability in the future. Thank you.